this is Kristen with Hooks, Books, and Wanderlust, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with another stitch tutorial to show you how to crochet the granite stitch. Um, there's a couple of different ways I would like to show you guys today. I'm going to show you a more traditional method, then I'm going to show you a modified method that I use in a couple of my patterns. Um, so that's why I've got two swatches that you can see here. But just real quick before we dive in on how we're going to make it, just want to tell you a little bit about it. The granite stitch is also referred to as the linen stitch or sometimes as the moss stitch. If you see either of those names, they're the same thing. The granite stitch is made using a single crochet and a chain stitch alternating all the way across your row. And then when you work your second or subsequent row, uh, you would work your single crochets into the chain one spaces from the previous row or round. Um, so it's a two stitch to row alternating repeat. Um, the traditional method is worked in multiples of two plus one. Um, and this other modified version that I'm going to show you, it's just a multiple of two. Um, the great thing about this stitch is there's a lot of stretch to it. It's very airy, breathable, um, and it has really great drape. Like if you're going to use it for a scarf or a garment of some kind or a shawl or something. So it's got a lot of great, great drape that's associated with it. But like, I love the openness of the stitches when it's blocked and stretched out. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you the traditional method first. So let me get this other one out of the way. And the thing to note is again, you need a stitch multiple of two plus one because we have two stitches that we're alternating the single crochet and the chain stitch. That's the two stitches plus one, because you are going to start and end every row with a single crochet. So, you have this kind of, let me zoom in here so you can see it a little better. Um, so I've got two single crochets at the end, at the beginning of this one, of this row and at the end of it. Whereas subsequent rows, I've just got a single crochet and then another single crochet and then it's chain spaces. So let's just go ahead and dive in and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So I've got my swatch is, um, I said a multiple of two plus one. So this swatch is 13 stitches. I started with 13 single crochets and then I just worked the granite stitch into them. So I'm gonna start my new row with a chain one. I've already got it here on my hook. And I'm gonna start and end every row with a single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet right into the first stitch. Now my first my row before this one has a chain space next, so I'm going to single crochet into the chain space. And then I'm going to chain one, skip my next cro uh, single crochet, my next stitch, and then I'm going to single crochet into the chain space that comes after. So I'm just going to keep in that method, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet into the chain one space and just continue across until I reach the end. The great thing about this stitch is I love working into chain spaces. I don't have to be like as finicky about where I put my hook as long as I just get it in that big old gap makes it easy. So I'm going to work my last single crochet into my last chain one space. Now I've got one stitch left in my row here. Um, it's a single crochet. And as I said, I'm going to begin and end with a single crochet. So that means in this particular row that I've doubled up at the beginning and the end with my double crochets. So I've got two single crochets at the beginning of the row and two at the end. So you can see those here. So I've got single crochet, single crochet, chain one space, single crochet, chain one space, single crochet, so on, so forth across. And I end with two single crochets. So anytime you have a, a chain one space, that's where you're going to put your single crochet. So now let's start the second row so I can show you what to do. 
when you don't have that chain one space there. So I've chained one and I'm turning my work so that I can go ahead and start my next row. I'm going to begin and end the row with a single crochet, just like I did before. So single crochet first. But now I've got a single crochet here. I'm not going to single crochet into that. This is where I'm going to go ahead and chain one and skip that single crochet. Then I will single crochet into the chain one space just beyond it. Like so. And then just continue in the same manner that you did the previous row. Chain one, single crochet into the chain one space, repeat. Chain one, single crochet into the chain one space, and do it over and over till you get to the end of your row here. So this is my last chain one space but I still have two stitches left. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to skip the first single crochet here. And then I'm going to single crochet into the last single crochet because again, I begin and end my row with a single crochet. So you can see what that looks like here. Um, personally, it's definitely the easiest way to work this stitch, but I'm not always a fan of the way that it looks because I don't like visually breaking up the pattern here where I've got the um, two single crochets at the beginning and end of some rows. So instead, I use this other modified version, which this allows me to work in the round really easily as well because I am using just a, a multiple of two. Um, I don't have to worry about having like two single crochets next to each other or two chain spaces next to each other at the beginning or the end of my rounds. So um, working this flat can be a little bit different as well. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys kind of what I do for this. Um, I use this method in my granite stitch kitchen cloth as well as an upcoming pattern that I'm going to be having um, a tank top coming out here very shortly. Um, so I've got a multiple of two this swatch is 10 stitches and I am going to start this row with a chain space. So you're probably thinking to yourself, um, how are you going to do that? So I'm going to chain two. Normally when we start a row of single crochet, we have a chain one for the height of our row. Now I'm just doing my chain one first and then I'm going to do my single crochet. So this is in effect going to kind of give me a box look. Let me see if I can kind of pull this in a way that I can show you here. So it will in effect will like make a box basically. And that box will get closed when I work my first single crochet into the first chain one space from the previous row. Well, I pulled my chain out really kind of loose there. So hang on, let me redo that. So chain two, and then you're going to single crochet into the first chain one space from the previous row. So now you have just created your first two stitches of this row. You've got your chain one space and your single crochet. Set that against the white background, you can see it a little better. So there's the chain one space right here, and then your single crochet just past it. So we're going to keep doing our regular granite stitch, alternating chain one with a single crochet in the chain one space from the row below until we get to the end. And as you'll see, that means that I end perfectly on a chain one space from the previous row. So I can just single crochet right on into it. And that is the end of my row. And as you can see, it has the same pattern all the way to the edge, which is what I like. I, I like the, to be able to see that pattern much more clearly and not broken up by any extra stitches where there don't really need to be any. So this method is also really great for working in the round because you can start your round with a chain space and then slip stitch right into that chain space to close it. So very easy 
to do that. So again, we are going to start with a chain two. Actually, I pulled those a little too tall. So chain two, that's gonna be my chain one space. I'm going to work my first single crochet into the chain one space from the row below. And now I've got this nice little space here. Chain one and just continue granite stitch across. Okay, and that last stitch should be a single crochet. You might have to kind of work under those chains because sometimes they get twisted when you turn your work, but just find the hole and single crochet into it. So that's one way. Um, I have my upcoming pattern, my tank top pattern actually uses granite stitch and then I, st I have, uh, it's going to be a tank top, so then I, there's going to be straps that get started on top of the granite stitch. So sometimes, depending on the size and what stitch number you need to attach your strap at, sometimes you're going to attach at a single crochet, sometimes you might have to attach in a chain one space. So it's good to know how to start your rows, um, how to make flat rows in this method, whether you're starting with a chain two that makes a chain one space, whether you're starting with a chain one space or whether you're ending with one. So that's what I'm going to show you next. So I've just shown you how to start your rows with a chain space, but now I'm going to show you how to end them that way. Before I do that, I am going to quickly make a row of single crochet just so that we're not, um, so that we can actually align stuff correctly. what I do here? So I'm just going into each chain one space and single crochet all the way across. This is just a basic row of single crochet, just setting up so that I can show you guys how to start, uh, how to end rather a row with a chain one space. So now I've got my row of single crochet. So um, I just showed you how to start a row with a chain one space, but now I'm going to show you how to end it with one. So in this case, I'm only going to chain one and single crochet into that very first stitch and then granite stitch across, chain one. I'm gonna skip the next stitch and single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. All right, so now I've reached the end of my row and I've got one stitch left here. So I am going to chain two. Again, it's the same as like when we started it. We're gonna use the chain two to give us our chain one across and then get us back down and we're gonna slip stitch into the top of that last single crochet so that we attach it right there. So that's going to give us this little gap. You can see where my hook is coming out now. And that's going to be our chain one or yeah, our chain one space at the end of this row. So then to start the next row, I'm just going to chain one like I normally do, turn it and single crochet into that space and then just continue working my way across and I think I'm going to run out of yarn that I allowed myself here for this swatch. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to show you that one more time and I'm going to kind of pull this entire row back. Well, not the entire row, but most of it. So again, let me just show you one more time. If you want to end your row with a chain one space, finish your last single crochet, chain two, and then slip stitch into the last single crochet of your row. And then to start, chain one, turn, and single crochet into that chain one space. Continue with your granite stitch across. And that is my modified version 
modified version A and B, apparently, um, on how to work the granite stitch. So that's both of our scraps and, not scraps, uh, swatches. And you can see there's a lot of stretch with this. I really love that stretch. Um, just keep that in mind though. There's that row of single crochet in the middle there, but um, just keep that in mind. Like if you are doing something um, with this stitch, it will stretch. So you might need to, blocking is essential, I think, to help get you that final finished size. So that is the granite stitch. I am going to be posting a photo tutorial for this on my blog, and I will link that in the description below. And um, as I mentioned before, this is going to be used in an upcoming pattern of mine, um, which still has no name yet, um, but I will post that in the description when that's out as well. Um, the granite stitch kitchen cloth is a uh, basically a kitchen towel that is made using the granite stitch and I will link that below if you are looking for a beginner project that um, that practices this stitch that's definitely a great project to start plus you end up with a really nice cushy crochet kitchen towel at the end of it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, if you did Give it a like and a thumbs up for me and uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future tutorials, patterns, or anything else on the blog here. And um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave those for me below and I will do my best to answer them. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.